Welcome to MAG's Cryogenic Machining Learning Lab. My name is George Giorgio. I'm the lead R&D engineer and product manager for cryogenic machining. I came from one of the legacy machine builders, which is now MAG, and have spent over 30 years as a chip making engineer, the last four in cryogenics. We'll go over the technology intro with the motivation, thermal effects, the cryo advantage, and optimization for maximum profits, a short history, the system and its components, application results, and finally, a presentation summary. The motivation is in part to eliminate conventional coolants, toxicity, bacteria, oily work environment, and all its related health and safety concerns. Also, the cost of disposal, environmental impact, government regulations, investments in pit and filtration with significant ongoing costs. One smart alternative to conventional coolants was the MQL technology led by MAG. We have over 300 machines in the field with this mist high quality oil spray through the tool technology. It is excellent in adding lubrication but does little to extract heat. Heat reduction became the industry's next challenge. Here are some of MQL's benefits, but MAG's vision was to step beyond to a more productive solution. Our MQL or near dry chip machine designs gave us the perfect platform for the next step of cryogenic dry machining. To fully appreciate cryogenics, we need to review chip making basics. I apologize in advance for presenting Machining 101 to manufacturing professionals like yourselves, but here we go. The process of cutting produces heat. The faster the cutting speed, the higher the heat. Any cooling media helps reduce cutting heat. Water 70 degrees, LN2 minus 321, a difference of approximately 400 degrees. Each tool material has a critical temperature where it will deteriorate to failure quickly. Different work materials bring tools to critical temperatures at different cutting speeds. Where do we find critical temperature? If we look at the heat and speed versus wear graph, we see diffusion and oxidization start and soon we're at a critical temperature which accelerates tool wear. Frederick Taylor in the early 1900s developed his famous tool life formula and suggests that in normal work environments, 15 minutes of tool life was the most cost effective. So what do we do today? Aerospace OEMs shoot for 45 minutes. Tiers, due to their less overhead, shoot for 60 to 120 minutes. A few extreme OEMs use very fast parameters. The North American auto truck use one shift due to uptime rules. EU, high volume, 15 to 60, mostly due to floor space limitations. Uh, we will review Taylor's concepts a few more slides. How does cryogenics affect tool life? This thermal plot of carbon steel shows us where the critical temperature will be for carbide tool edge. If we apply a cryogenic process and are able to extract 300 degrees Fahrenheit, we reduce the tool wear and see an 80% increase at conservative speeds. If we're pushing the limits past the critical cutting temperature, which may be the most profitable machining parameters, and apply the 300 degree delta, we can see a larger increase in tool life. But in many cases, tools are cheap compared to the machine burden rates. For example, a $10 edge versus $250 per hour burden rate. So how do we gain productivity? The thermal plot is cryogenically shifted 300 degrees depending on the efficiency of the tool. We'll talk about that soon. Once I move the critical temperature, I move my parameters and gain significant speed and productivity. Theoretically, this is the logic behind the cryogenic advantage. Before we go any further, we need to explain why we have chosen LN2 as our cryogenic fluid. Health and safety. 78% of the air we breathe is nitrogen. We take nitrogen from the air, we cool it till it liquefies at minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit, put it through our machines, through the cutting tool, and give it back to the atmosphere. We borrow it and then give it back. It can't get any greener than that. We safeguard oxygen depletion with oxygen sensors in case of a malfunction or a spill and provide gloves for any manual tool handling. In comparison to other cold alternatives, as you can see in the chart, LN2 is one of the coldest liquids. Some have attempted CO2, which is a greenhouse gas, and is only a third as cold as liquid nitrogen. A hidden benefit of LN2 is that it creates a nitrogen atmosphere in the work zone and eliminates any oxidization. This was pointed out as a benefit by Lockheed Martin and Pratt & Whitney in certification tests that we ran for them. And now a few minutes on how we evolved to this point. 
On MAG's cryogenic evolution, our research and development started since 2003. Phase one was the development in partnerships with the Small Business Innovations Research, SBIR, with the U.S. Navy and Bell Helicopter on the V-22 program. Phase two, uh, developments displayed at uh, IMTS in 2010. Uh, phase three, developments in partnership with Lockheed Martin Aeronautics, focused on cost reduction of the F-35 GSF program, approved for the F-35 titanium roughing. Finished machining is expected by fourth quarter of this year. Developments displayed at IMX and EMO in 2011, and seven new platforms uh, were presented and demonstrated at EMO in the 2011 trade show. Production ready, new machines and aftermarket retrofits are basically ready at this point in time. Strategic range of cryogenic cycle cut cutting tools are also available. Uh, exclusive license to the intellectual property of Criari and multiple Criari and MAG patents have been issued and pending on this technology. In development and intellectual property, multiple spindle and tooling patents as used in the machines displayed at EMO include horizontal milling machines, vertical milling machines, vertical and horizontal lathes. As far as materials go, we machine titanium, composites, compacted graphite iron, steels, and inconel, though there are benefits to many more materials. The way we're moving forward is with strategic customer sponsorship where we have access to process and tooling. Uh, the EMO show awarded MAG uh, cryogenic machining with their innovation award and the IMX show and learning lab and other publications won us the King Award. We are being recognized as a leader in this field. Now let's take a look at the system. It consists of an L2 source the brain for control, the feed system to and within the machine, the spindle and the tooling, and now let's take a look at each one in more detail. The liquid nitrogen source can be a simple doer to supply a test machine or bulk storage for a large production installation. A company like Air Products could install the storage and supply the nitrogen. It can also be a micro bulk source for a cell configuration and our future goal is for a self-contained generating system still a number of years out. The spindle is the source of many of the patents issued and pending. We use vacuum insulated feed tubes and control valves to keep the LN2 liquid but not allow temperature transfer to the spindle shaft and bearings. Gen 1 is the spindle on the display stand. Gen 2 was developed for higher RPM 12, 16 and 24,000. The tooling is unique and also has multiple patents issued and pending. The uniqueness that separates MAG's process to the prior attempts is the refrigeration rather than the flood spray concept. The venting through the cutting edges puts the supercooling effect of the LN2 where it is most needed with little waste. As the insert creates the chip, there are three sources of heat. Shear zone, friction on the rake face, and the heel heat converge onto the point or the edge of the insert where it is extracted as it is produced. As you can see, the tools are plumbed with insulation to keep the LN2 liquid till it exhausts to atmosphere. And now what you've been waiting for, applications. This titanium link is the part selected for phase three, which is the phase that got us Lockheed Martin approval for rough machining. We expect finished machining approval by the end of the year. This demo is running on a retrofitted vertical milling machine owned by Bell Helicopter. We saw improvements in tool life and nearly two times processing speed. Another aerospace titanium application, which was a star demo, was this BLISC process. Here we incorporated MQL, minimum quantity lubrication, with the cryogenics, which yielded 30% higher feed rates and 60% improvement in tool life. This is a vertical lathe application turning titanium at 450 surface feet per minute. It was cryogenic only with two times increase in tool life. Shifting to an automotive application, cutting compact to graphite iron, we increased the speed by 50% and gained two times the tool life. A similar demo is running on the HMC 1600 cutting a Ford diesel 6.7 liter V8 block. Now an industrial equipment application, cutting alloy steel 
This is also running on the five axis tilt spindle HMC 1600. The results on this were excellent. We achieved three times conventional tool life. Now we need to go back and test for maximum productivity increases. Uh, we reached 12 thousandths flank wear after 435 cubic inches of metal removed. A unique application, this is a wind energy propeller blade root. We drilled 80 three inch holes where it mounts to the iron hub. The three times normal RPM made this process possible to stabilize the robot and keep the fiberglass composite material below its melting temperature. This is a sold order to Boeing, drilling and trimming the 787 carbon composite fuselage. MEG is also one of the largest composite tape laying machine manufacturers. This comes off our tape layers, it's autoclaved, drilled, and then the windows and doors are trimmed on this large machine. The benefits are preventing pullouts, decrease of heat caused delamination, and extended tool life, all to be validated once the machine is complete. In summary, as we discussed earlier, we can take advantage of the environmental benefits of the non-polluting, inert, safe nitrogen gas. This technology can and will eliminate coolants. And of course, the machining advantage of the temperature difference which moves us to higher productivity as we showed on the thermal graphs. Getting back to Taylor's curves, which is represented by the cost per unit plotted against cutting speed, we understand that the burden rate of a machine system will be divided into more units as we cut faster, therefore reducing the cost per unit. And our tooling costs increase because we wear tools faster. If the cost of a tool edge is $10, we can burn through many tools to offset the two to $300 per hour machine burden rate. We can reduce tooling costs due to longer life, but more dramatically, we can run faster to decrease unit cost. Every process will yield a different percentage increase depending mostly on materials being cut, the process, and the cutting tool efficiency. I want to take the opportunity to thank all of you for attending and hope this introduction to MAG's cryogenic machining was worth your time. Please take a few minutes and view the demos and talk to representatives on the floor and ask them any questions you may have. Again, thanks for your attention.